All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Um, so today we're going to be talking about chapter finances, um, how to create a financially healthy chapter and the chapter treasurer's report. Um, I just wanted to first remind you all of a few upcoming deadlines. Uh, May 1st is the deadline to get everything in for your chapter to be in good standing and to receive June lo local support. So to be in good standing, just as a refresher, uh, you need to submit each year an annual report, a treasurer's report. You should have bylaws on file with us here at headquarters. Uh, you need to submit a slate of officers, which you submit through your annual report. Every three years uh, since the last annual meeting, now we have passed where you have to submit at least three new members every two years. And you need to send a delegate to the annual meeting once every three years. Also June 30th is the end of the fiscal year. So that's when we will uh, flip the switch and reports will open the next day for the following fiscal year. And then on July 14th, that is when the 20% discount off annual meeting registration ends. And then here's just a couple upcoming chapter chats. Uh, these dates are subject to change, but plan for the next one to be on June 5th, where we will talk about chapter management and onboarding. All right, now before we begin about, uh, I will walk you through the treasurer's report. I would like to invite Jasmine Shaw, the Director of Finance and Administration, to talk about why it is important for you to be filing the treasurer's report each year. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, uh, this is a question that everybody asks, why do we have to submit the treasurer's report? Um, well, what has happened in the past, um, each chapter is independent. You do your own finances. We have nothing to do with it. The headquarters have no control over your finances nor uh, your day-to-day -day operations. The reason we do this is because in the past, uh, the officers would go away. There would be no succession plan. The person who takes over the treasurership or the presidency or become an officer in whichever category, uh, they had no knowledge of what was going on, where were they organizing documents. Basically, this started out in 2007, 2008, when small businesses, including nonprofit chapters, and other organizations were required to file this um, so-called postcard, which is e-postcard with the IRS. At that time, many chapters, uh, yeah. officers would contact us to say, do you have a tax ID? Do you have something that we can file this? I don't have the organizing document. I don't know who, what the address on the, when the, when we filed for the tax ID, what address was put in, we don't know. So there were a lot of um, unknown um, factors that affected. So the treasurer at that time decided to do something about this where uh, just like everything else, we do have a chapter record minus all these. So we decided let's create a report that we would keep it sec in a secure place uh, for the such officers that really requires all this because uh, they have nothing else to fall back to, uh, which is why we started collecting the data that you see in the treasurer's report and uh, I think effective 2018 we made it mandatory uh, and made it part of the good standing as part of the good standing requirement um, so that's the background of it we keep it uh, we update the chapter records with the text ID number so in case anybody needs it it's there because that's your ID that kind of uh, IRS recognizes you with that special ID that it provides but other than that, we keep everything confidential. We know nothing about, uh, yes, we're asking you to provide the bank balance and we're asking you to say, ask, uh, we're also asking a question saying, do you have an endowment? This is simply so that we can transfer this information if need be, which there is, uh, that we just provide this information to the officer on file that, uh, that really requires it in order for that chapter to run. So that's the background. And I'm now handing it over to Rachel who will go over the um, details on the treasurer's report. Thank you, Jasmine. Okay, so um, as I always recommend, what you will first be doing is you will log on to your My Sigma Xi. Let me um, open this. Uh, Rachel, could I um, yes. uh, um, ask you a question? 
I'm getting some of the feedback. Is it me or is it you? Or is anyone else hearing the feedback? I mean, when she's speaking, I'm getting some kind of a staticky. Is it? Yes. Mine is clear. Yours is clear? So maybe it's mine then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. No, you're fine. Thank you. Because I would have been very bad if um, there was static going on. Okay. All right. All right. Are you seeing Sigma's eye on the screen? I'm seeing the staff directory, the contact. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it's on the page that I yeah. want it to be on. Um, are you now seeing home? Jasmine? Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Um, all right. So I will log into my Sigma's eye. So Rachel, is this what the chapter officers would do when they first go on yes. to access so, the officer resource or chapters? Yes. So first you'll log on to the website and then you'll be going to My Sigma's Eye. Once you land on My Sigma's Eye, you'll see self services here and underneath there you'll see treasurer's report. I advise for your first step to be to be to read through the treasurer's report to see what information you need, especially if this is your first time filling out the report. Um, you'll see that there's a few fields that are automatically put in like your local support and local dues collected, if any, and that is what you will get from us, but that will be automatically included on your report. Um, everything else will be filled out on your own. So at the beginning, um, it also say that I'm filling this out. I would select What type of um, organization organization we are. Um, I don't know our tax identification number. Um, if anything, as Jasmine said, that is something that she would probably have on file. Um, I'm going to choose the Bank of Sigma Xi is where the test chapter banks and our bank account name is the Sigma Xi test chapter. And this is a checking account. And I'm going to say that I am the sole person with access to the bank account. Um, and then I'm going to, for all of you, fill out um, a mock treasurer's report. Um, so for starters, the cash at bank, which you see there, is going to be the same amount that you should end at the balance at the end of the year. So those two numbers should be the same because this report, you're actually filling out the previous year's information. As you will see here, uh, this is for the fiscal year 2019, which is July 1st to June 30th. Unlike the annual report where some of your information is also looking ahead, this is all looking back. So I'm going to say that we have $15,000 cash at bank. Um, no certificate of deposits and no investments. The balance at the beginning of the year. Um, so this would actually be what we had ended with last year. And then local support and dues, we collected $192.72. Since I don't want to deal with um, the cents, I'm going to say that in gifts, we received $5,028. And then we would go down to expenses. All right, so I'm going to say for travel, we traveled with $193. Uh, we caught a really nice cheap flight to the annual meeting, so it only cost us $193. And then we also spent money on miscellaneous things. Um, and I'm going to say that cost us $1,000. And we um, also spent $1,000 on administration fees, which brings us back to $15,000, which is once again, the cash that we currently have at the bank. And then you'll see at the bottom here, there's a comments section. Um, I advise putting a comments in of what potentially your breakdowns were. So for miscellaneous expenses, what I mean is we provided blue folders for all of our nominees and graduation cords. And that could come to the $1,000. And then let's say instead you've given out chapter awards, you could describe what kind of chapter awards and once all this information is filled out, 
you can submit this information. It'll ask you if you want to confirm and you will hit OK. Now, the one great thing about the treasurer's report that is unlike the annual report is if you reached out to your chapter leaders beforehand asking um, if they knew what kind of expenses were made by the chapter that year and you didn't hear back and then a week later you do hear back to say we spent $3,000 on administration fees, you'd be able to go back and actually resubmit the chapter's treasurer's report. The only downside is none of the information will be filled out again, but it is a good safeguard uh, because later on Jasmine will talk about healthy bookkeeping, but um, you will want this kind of information to be as precise as possible um, for the future. All right. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. All right. So now I was hoping that we could talk about um, what makes a financially healthy chapter now that we've gone through the treasurer's report. So one of the first steps that you can take as a chapter is finding out who will be paying for the nominees. This is a question that we receive a lot from chapters, especially when they're not sure if their finances are being handled properly, if they're spending too much on certain activities. So we had actually in 2008, um, particularly a man had done a, um, a survey to chapter leaders about who pays what for their new initiates. So those are four questions. 2018. 2018? Did I say 17 or? Oh, it was 2000. Yeah, I wasn't here in 2008. <laughs> oh, 2018, sorry. Um, it says it there also, 2018. Um, Iman, did you want to talk more about this survey or I can talk about this survey? It's up to you. No, go ahead. And if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to address them. Go ahead. Okay. So what we found in this survey is that a lot of our chapters here is purple with the chapters broken down by constituency. Um, actually, a lot of our chapters, the initiate pays both of their fees. So this is also broken down here. How are first year dues and initiate, initiate fees paid for new initiates? Initiates pay both their new member dues and their initiation fee. The chapter pays both, which was also a large amount. So 26% of the chapters that answered this survey, they pay for both. Chapter pays just the initiation fees. We do see that. So you would be covering the $20 fee and the new member would be covering the new member dues um, and then others were broken down and they provided their explanation for who covered those dues. So um, sometimes those will be the chapter pays the full dues for somebody who wins an award at a science fair and just one of their new members and the other members cover all if not most of their dues. And this is also all found on the Officer Resource Center. Any questions on that? Okay. All right, another way that you can generate revenue for your chapter is by collecting local dues. Um, you can either have this done by us here or you can collect local dues completely on your own as a chapter. And I'm going to bring it back to Jasmine, who will talk more about local dues and the rest of the information. So um, local dues is basically your money. And um, it, uh, currently we have, I think, more than half of our active chapters for whom we are collecting local dues. It's, it ranges between $1 to like $15 or $20, depending on what the chapter decides. And they let us know, and we put it on the dues notice. It is voluntary. It's not mandatory. And um, so we collect it um, along with the dues. We hold it. And this, is, this has been a practice before my time uh, where Sigma Xi would do this and then uh, pay it at the time of the local support when that gets paid. So local dues is basically the chapter money we are holding, and we, we pay them in a lump sum, which is what the – chapter officers have requested in the past. So we are, we are following that practice. However, nothing stops you from collecting the dues on your end from your members that attend your 
meetings or banquets or whatever and keep it there. You don't have to submit it back to us. Uh, this was something that the majority of our chapter offices in the past had requested, so we are just providing this service. So that's the difference between local dues and local support. Um, I'll get into local support, which is the next one, is majority of you basically know what that is, but I'll still try to explain. Um, it's the support that society provides you for being a chapter. This is the money that society gives you. Um, it's calculated uh, based on the regular dues-paying members, meaning those that pay $125 and they're affiliated to your chapter. Um, we give $10 out of each regular dues-paying members. And there's a formula, and I'm sure you received that from us, especially if you're a treasurer. Uh, Michelle Tabor, our manager of accounting, sends that along with the payment um, three times a year to tell you how it was calculated. But it's a formula, one third, um, we do one third, one third, two thirds. So one third is um, considered as a uniform increment because we do have small chapters and we have large chapters. Just to be, uni uh, just to be fair to all of them, uh, that they, rec uh, they receive a small amount. Uniform increment is calculated in September based on the number of chapters. Um, number of members that are regular dues paying members and we divide it by the total good standing chapters. So each chapter receives at least more than $100 in the form of uniform increment. Uh, the two thirds is then paid in two installments which happens to be in September and then in January. And June is kind of a catch up all. We get members that renew uh, the last quarter um, of the year, or maybe from January, February through June, and they're paying also local dues along. So if those, those are collected, that's a small amount that some of our chapters do receive at the end of June. But that's the support, strictly your money. We give it to you for you to run the chapter programs or use it for chapter. Yeah. And then the, third, the next one is the small chapter banking. What is that? Well, we had small chapters in the past uh, that are requested in one of our annual meetings uh, saying um, our universities would not allow us to have a bank account with them. We are too small. We only receive a small deposit every year. Why do we want to carry the bank fees? Because the bank would charge them a service fee. They have to go through a lot of hoops even to open the account. So they requested if we could do something for them for a small fee. And so we decided we were going to do that. Currently, we have about six chapters for whom we are doing bookkeeping, uh, basically maintaining their so, uh, bank accounts. So um, these chapters were, first of all, how do you set it up? They will send whatever they have. They close the bank account they have, send us that money. We take that money, have a special bank account for the chapters. We put it in there. And then um, individually for each chapter, we track it. So any receipts that we receive during the year in the form of local support, local dues, gets credited to that chapter. And then at the time, the chapter also requests us to say, okay, I have like two or three initiatives for which I would like you to pay, use the money that's in my bank account or in my chapter account and pay towards that. So we just pay towards that. So at the end, every year, every quarter, I believe uh, Michelle will send, accounting manager will send them a report saying this is your accounting report, this is what you received, this was your balance, this is your ending balance. But that's how most of, at the six of our chapters are pretty happy with that service. Because the activity is so small, we're not charging any fees. Because it doesn't even take, Michelle, any time at all. It's just less than a minute to get this done, or maybe a 30 minutes or an hour. So we're not charging for these chapters. At the six chapters, we've not done it yet. But that is something we encourage small chapters to uh, take that service from us. Um, currently, we're not charging. If a chapter has too many activities, yes, we may decide to, but it will be cheaper than having a bank account and paying the bank service fees. Um, healthy bookkeeping. What is that? Just to make sure during the year, so for example, your income, local support, we always have an account. You don't have to, but the receipts, so some of you collect uh, checks from your new mem uh, from your inductees, and then you turn over the money to us. Um, you receive grants or maybe some kind of a program income that you may receive for which you have to provide. You want to make sure you keep a receipt. As per the IRS, 
you want to keep it at least for three years, and then you can shred it. But any checks that you received, you need to shred it right away, deposit into the bank, shred it, because you're not required to, uh, you cannot keep it on file because of the security purposes. But the receipt, meaning there's a bank receipt, the bank is giving you something saying, here's your deposit and here's your deposit ticket, keep it. Keep it for at least three years. Expenses, a line ticket. Uh, Sigma Xi for the delegates, we pay to or come to the annual meeting, so you don't need to do that to keep it. But any out-of-pocket expenses that you incur during, the, during your travel to the annual meeting or any other chapter business that you travel, you want to keep those receipts and provide in the chapter. Uh, so an officer will give you that based on which you could reimburse the officer, but then you want to keep that payment also that you made just to keep it up. So it's basically your bank account. So every month you probably receive a statement, but it's different for those that are with the university because you're covered under the umbrella of the university. So you don't have to worry about that. But those that have individual bank uh, accounts, it's very important that every time you get a bank uh, reconciliation statement or bank statement from the bank, just attach those, keep it in a folder so that you can keep it for three years. That is what I would request. That would be a best and easy and simplest way to conduct a business and should somebody ask a question. And it's also a good thing to keep it in a folder, save it in somewhere, that if you, were, you decide to resign and you go away, somebody else takes over, it's easy to hand over that folder to this individual so they can carry on. So uh, that's the best practice. And um, if you need more information, reach out to us at Finance. We'll be glad to help you. Finance at SigmaZai.org or Jasmine Shah, Michelle Tabor, or contact Rachel, and she'll be, she can, she'll be able to connect us. So back to Rachel now. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, I would also like to point out when she was talking about keeping the records, um, we do have your treasurer's reports. Um, I have them saved. Uh, when you submit your treasurer's report on Sigma Xi, you don't automatically receive a copy like you would the annual report. So if you want copies, you can reach out to us and we can send you copies of your treasurer report, treasurer's reports. Even if you're trying to remember um, how much cash you had on bank at the end of last year, I can send you last year's report so you're prepared for this upcoming uh, re report. Um, Okay, I would like to remind you once again of the future chapter chats, uh, the one on June 5th about chapter management and onboarding that could potentially change. And Jasmine said you can contact them at finance at sigmazi.org. You can also contact the chapters department at chapters at sigmazi.org. And we love to hear from you. Now I would like to open the floor for um, any questions? You can also submit your questions in the chat, or if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself. This is uh, Gene Rosenberg, uh, Florida International University chapter. Uh, I'm just wondering why is it not possible to print out a copy of the uh, of the uh, the financial report? It seems it would be very useful going into the following year to, for the chapter to maintain, have a copy of it. I, I don't see why, why not? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, Jasmine probably would answer that better or even of why it's just not available online. Wait, I, Jasmine, what? okay, go ahead. No, go ahead, Amen. that's fine. We're, we're working on it. We are working on updating that platform uh, to allow officers to download a copy of their treasurer's report, just as similar to what they do with the annual report. It's work in progress, yep. But in Thank the meantime, you. feel free to get in touch with us for a copy of any of the past year's reports. Any other questions? Uh, yes, this is uh, Doug Pfeiffer from the Virginia Tech chapter. I see this uh, session is being recorded. Uh, will we have a link to, uh, to come back and refer to this later? Yes, so uh, we actually have a section on the Officer Resource Center that is dedicated to chapter chats. 
Um, I would also like to point out on the Officer Resource Center um, here, I will share my screen again so um, I can take us all there. Um, all right. Oop. Sorry, my video is all in the way. Um, all right, so we would go to chapters, we would go to the um, Officer Resource Center. All right, are you seeing the Officer Resource Center there on your screen? Yes, okay, thank yeah. you. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> you will find the um, other helpful resources and documents. Oh, I felt that's where it was. Deanna, is it still under there or is it a different section? I think it's under the toolkit maybe. Toolkit, yeah. Thank you. Sorry about that. So under chapters toolkit, um, you will see the chapter chat series. So right now we just have the first one that we had done, but the annual report one will be on there soon. And then this one will also be on there. So you'll be able to look back at this. Um, so however, great. under that other helpful resources and documents that I first went to, I would like to point out that we do have recorded the chapter finances uh, discussion and workshop from the 2019 meeting. So that's another great resource where we talked about a lot of the similar pieces that we're talking about today. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I think those are also linked on the same page as the chapter chat series. I think we have them in both places. Okay, great. Uh, Gene Rosenberg again. I was also confused by that first checkoff piece on the uh, treasurer's <laughs> report. I don't know what those things are. Uh, are you uh, referring to whether you're a nonprofit? Is that the yeah, first checkoff? There, were, there okay. were three. There were three checkoffs there. Yes. Right. Yes. So uh, I believe the first one is the text ID, um, and that is the identification number that the IRS provides for any organization to conduct business. So um, when you form a chapter, that's the first thing you need to kind of obtain, not. All our chapters have done that in the past because this wasn't regulated. It started, the regulations happened in 2007, 2008. So that's that. If you don't have it, um, the second one, um, Rachel, can you go back to, do you have yes. a sample? Uh, I think there is a nonprofit. So there's a difference between nonprofit and not for profit. Nonprofit is an organization such as Sigma Xi who is, if it's 501c3, which is the tax exempt, then we can, it's a charitable organization, we can receive uh, donations and we can issue tax deductible receipts. Not-for-profit is the status which is given by the state. And each state has different rules and regulations, but that's what you would be called. So when you form a small organization, uh, you would be calling yourself saying, when you submit your articles of association or the organizing document to the state, which is the first thing you need to do is to say, give me permission to conduct business as a chapter. And so you will be calling yourself not for profit. Uh, the tax exam status comes later. It all depends um, if, and because of the way IRS wants to record the small organization on its books, they require you, once you start filing 990N, up within three years, you must file for tax exempt status. Um, and there is a fee to file that, but that's what that tax exempt under 501c3 is, is basically allowing you to raise funds and issue tax deductible receipt and conduct charitable uh, uh, programs. So you'll be treated as a charity. But I don't believe many of our chapters are 501c3 tax exempt because they do not do that. Uh, they do not raise funds. They don't uh, really receive, need that. But there are, so we have a divide. There are some chapters, they, they are 501c3 because they do have endowments, they have investments, and they need to, uh, and that's how they raise funds. So they are considered 501c3. But if you, are, if you do not know who you are, um, you, you pretty much keep it unchecked, but most likely you are not for profit. That is given. Whether you're exempt or non-exempt, you don't know unless you have that determination letter from the IRS. 
um, but most chapters are not. And we don't know unless you fill that out. When you fill that portion out, then that's when we go on our record and we check the box saying your chapter is tax exempt. But we would know, not know otherwise. So I hope I explained that. Is it better now? Understanding one of those three options? I need to talk to our treasurer. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And if you need help, please uh, have the treasurer contact me at any time. I'll be glad to walk them through the steps. All right, and Jasmine, I had a question. Um, if we run all finances through the academic institution, then what do we list as the bank and do we need to list the college's tax ID? No, you don't. All you do, I think there is a section somewhere, if you are doing it with institution, you do not need to check all that. But if you go down, can you scroll up? a little bit there is somewhere we say we do i think we had an option that may have been taken away saying we do our banking with the institution then you're not even required to uh, be any of those because you are under the umbrella of your university or the academic or the institution and you do not even have to file 990n you're not required to file because you're just sheltered under the uh, 501c3 that's what i believe we do at, at okay, Florida so there you go. University. You don't need to. All right. Yes. That explains my confusion. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I guess for clarity, if that's the case for us, then we just skip everything at the top and go straight to the statement of assets and income and expenses. That is correct. That is correct. And I'm sure your university would be providing you with uh, some kind of an accounting that you can, you know exactly what's in your account. Yes. Yes, for us, that's also the case. That's good. And I think majority of our chapter love it because they don't have to file 990N, the tax form, and that's a blessing. Because when they do it under the university, when the university files, they're all covered. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I guess I would like to open the floor to Iman or Jasmine on closing remarks for our chapter leaders. Okay, well, um, I will make it quick. I just want to say thank you all for, for coming today and participating in this. I hope you found the information helpful and um, in, good in streamlining this whole complicated process finances. <laughs> thank you, Jasmine, for contributing to, to this. And um, we understand that everybody right now is under all the pressure. Academic institutions are having a hard time adjusting to online teaching and, and working with the students. and um, Sigma's Eye is here for you, headquarters is here for you. We're still processing everything as, as normal. Um, nominations are coming in, so this is a good time for you to recognize what the students have done during you know, the past year and um, help them celebrate by recognizing their achievements and, and getting them through this rough time. Um, we do have a couple of events that I would like to uh, bring to your attention. The Student Research Showcase uh, presentations are going to go live. Um, this is a virtual event. It's going live on the 27th on Monday. Uh, we always appreciate our chapter officers volunteering to judge and we have the information on our website. Uh, I will also be posting that sometime over the weekend how you can volunteer to, to contribute with, to evaluating those um, presentations. We also have another new event that's going to be on May 14th, Virtual Student Scholar Symposium, um, that we will also um, value your input and contributions to evaluating student presentations and giving them feedback and helping them celebrate what they've done um, throughout the year. So thank you and thank you all for coming and Rachel for hosting. Um, any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you very much. And um, just uh, like Iman said, we are here to help you. Rachel said, we are here to help you. 
finance is a complicated um, issue. No, we know you're not, uh, you didn't go to the school to do the accounting, and we are here to help you. So please reach out for even small questions. No question is too small or too large. We'll be able to help you. Thank you. And stay safe and stay healthy. Uh, Rachel, can we do one poll with like raise of hand or something? Um, if I don't think that's a feature right do. now, but we can do if people wanted to physically raise their hand. It, well, I, just because it's it's a good that we have a good group of officers on on the um, on the chat. Is anyone doing virtual induction for their students or inductees this spring? You, you can unmute yourself and respond if you would like to. Yeah, we're doing, uh, this is uh, Steve Holler at uh, Fordham University. Uh, we're having a virtual induction ceremony next week um, to get our students involved. We have one of the faculty that's going to give a talk. Uh, so we're doing this over a Zoom webinar. Fantastic. So we're, we're actually doing one for at large um, this week, but if you would like to contribute to a multi-chapter virtual induction. This is something we're considering. So let us know and we can coordinate that with you. Uh, and Stephen, if you would like to share this information with us, we'll promote it. We're always happy to celebrate what the chapters do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you know. We're, we're finalizing the details right now. We just kind of decided on it the other day. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. <laughs>